are in week four of our life group season and in week three of our discussion surrounding the sermon series, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. In the last two weeks, we have talked about life in the kingdom and salvation into that kingdom life. This week, we're going to talk about dying for Jesus. Yep, that's what I said. And no, I'm not talking about playing possum. Have you, have you ever heard that phrase before? Playing possum? Do you know what it means? Have you ever seen it happen? You know, an opossum playing possum. It looks like this. <laughs> Isn't that cool? The opossum looks like it's dead, so that predators won't consider eating it for lunch. But here's a really cool thing. It isn't doing it on purpose. The opossum doesn't all of a sudden say, I'm going to play dead, and then lie down and pretend to be dead. It doesn't do that. Instead, out of the fear of whatever is approaching it, it goes into a catatonic state and almost becomes paralyzed and then passes out at the same time. That is just how it, its body responds to fear. But that is how God created it to give it a defense mechanism against predators. Sometimes it works and the predator goes on by and sometimes it doesn't. But it looks like the opossum dies. So the opossum has to die so that it can live. The opossum can help us to better understand what Jesus will be teaching us today. The Jesus teaching that we're going to be looking at today is one that can be found in all four of the Gospels. And in a couple of the Gospels, we find this teaching in multiple times. Well, if Jesus is teaching something multiple times, Guess what? Yeah, it must be an important concept for us to learn and apply into our lives. So let's look into Matthew chapter 16, and we'll be starting in verse 21. But before we read that part, let me tell you about what happened just before. Jesus had just asked the disciples the question, who do the people out there say that I am? And then he asked them the follow-up question, who do you say that I am? Peter answered correctly by saying, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Right after that, we come to our text for today where Jesus is going to start off by letting them know what it is that it means for him to be the Messiah. This is what the Messiah must do. So we read, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Wait, this is the great Simon Peter who was one of the original leaders of the church? 
you know, there are many churches around the world that's called St. Peter's Church. But here, in this moment, Jesus says to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Yep, that's what he said. Have you ever heard that statement before? Well, this is where it was first spoken. To Peter, by Jesus. But we need to make sure that we notice why. Again, Jesus said, you are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Ouch. And that ouch is not just for Peter. It's also for us. Because I know for a fact that we have all had those moments or days or lifetimes where we see things more from our worldly point of view instead of looking at them from God's point of view. So with that in mind, why don't you pause the video and wrestle with those first couple of questions and then come back for a little bit more. So how did that discussion go? Were there some tense moments when you were squirming in your seat? Let's face it. God calls us to do certain things that are not normal things to do. And sometimes, yeah, they can be downright hard. Getting back to our Jesus story, Jesus did not leave us hanging and wondering. He goes on to help Peter, the disciples, and us to better understand what he's hoping for us to learn and to live out. Verse 24, Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in the glory of his Father and will judge all people according to their deeds. So what is Jesus wanting of us? He wants us to play possum. He wants us to live, but to truly live that abundant, blessed life that he longs to share with us, we first have to die. Or as he says here, we must give up our own way of living for his sake. We need to stop hanging on to our life. Again, think to some of those conversations back in question one. Now, allow me to share a time in my life when this passage hit me hard. And I know that there's a few of you men and maybe a few women too who won't like what I might share right now. Back when Karen and I first got married, I was right around 30 years old. And for the previous 20 years of my life, when the fall season hit, like right now, I was out in the woods almost every weekend and a full week of vacation in November to hunt anything that was in season. Rabbits, squirrel, grouse, turkey, whitetails, and bear. It was just what my family did. But Karen, my new wife, did not grow up in a family that did that. So we got married in June and spent the summer celebrating our new marriage. And then the end of September hit and I started to disappear every weekend. And then November came and I disappeared an entire week. And even after I filled up my tag, I would still go out to help the other guys get their tags filled out too. It's just what I did. It was my life. And don't forget, 20 years ago, we didn't have those cell phones that I could talk to her every moment or text when I was gone. When I was gone, I was gone. I didn't understand why several times as I was pulling out of the driveway, Karen had tears in her eyes, waving goodbye. Truthfully, at first, I thought it was a little selfish of her to make me feel guilty for going hunting. Girl, you live in Pennsylvania. And in PA, we hunt a lot. Guys, I told you you wouldn't like this example. You see, we husbands are told a few different times in Scripture 
that we need to love our wives the way Christ loved the church. And again, how did he love the church? He played possum. He died. After that first fall, I realized if I really wanted to love my wife and therefore follow Jesus, I was going to need to die a little or maybe a lot. Now, the good thing is that my wife loves me, and she was not at all expecting me to give up something that I loved or give up the family and friends who I hunted with. But at the same time, as I listened to her heart, I realized that I needed to sacrifice to give up a little of my life. You know, I wish I could say that it was easy and we struck a quick and easy compromise, but it wasn't, and we didn't. Each year was a new and different discussion on how to love each other, especially after we started having children. You know, leaving my wife at home with a baby or two, well, we needed to love each other through that. Giving up something that I loved doing was not easy. But when I started to sacrifice that which my wife knew that I loved for her sake and Jesus, guess what? Guess what that did to our relationship? I died and life happened. Our marriage was better when I loved her by giving up. Guess what she started doing? She started making the weekends that I was scheduled to go out hunting more of a priority. She started making sure that I got out on time. And she started making really good food for me to take to the hunting cabin for me and the guys. You see, as we both loved each other, as we both died, we both then lived. If we play possum, we begin to find life, abundant life, a blessed life. It's not easy. Dying never is. But there is nothing like a life blessed by Jesus. Okay, I have a few more questions for you to consider and to discuss, and there's a bonus passage if you even want to go a little deeper.